if you thoroughly followed parts 1 and 2 of this series, you should be running sub 13 on your 2 mile and have a 1000 pound powerlifting total. Now it's time to take your training to the next level and translate that general foundation of fitness that you built to expressions of fitness that more closely align with the demands of selection so that you will get selected. In this video, first we'll discuss what is selection specific training and why you need to be doing it in the lead up to selection. Second, I'll be going over a sample workout to maximize your training. Third, I'll cover a classic training mistake that many of my former athletes were guilty of and I know many of you are too which is why you're failing to see results. And then finally, I'll break down how and when to incorporate selection specific training into your routine. Before diving into this framework which I personally have designed through trial and error and the feedback of the many candidates I've coached through selection, I have to say that many of you watching simply do not have the base of strength and endurance. And if you start applying the principles in this video too early, you will be wasting your time. Getting prepared for selection is like constructing a 100 story skyscraper. Before you can even think about constructing the walls or the top level, you need to have a strong and deep foundation. That foundation in selection is a foundation foundation in strength and endurance training. After you have that secure foundation, you can then begin adding in the frame. If you have a poor foundation, you may be able to get one or two stories high, but eventually you will hit a wall and you will have to rebuild your foundation before you can make more progress. The same is true for physical preparedness. What is selection specific training? It's training to become proficient in the tasks that you will have to do in your military course. Timed 5 mile runs, 12 mile rocks, heavy carries, fin swims, logs, and doing all of these in challenging sequences when you're already fatigued. In the same way that the best way to get a fast marathon is through a variety of workouts, not just doing a marathon every day, we can apply that same principle in how we get you prepared for selection. So after you've developed that reservoir of strength and endurance that you can draw from, next you need to put all of the pieces together and actually simulate the demands of selection so that you can better manage that stress and perform well. But how do you simulate selection without destroying your body and also continue to progress in terms of physical performance at the same time? You do it through what I call selection specific work capacity sessions. These work capacity sessions train your ability to complete repeat efforts similar to the demands of selection over a given duration. Here's a rough example of what one of these sessions looks like. First, it starts by fatiguing and targeting the muscles used most at selection. So we'll start with three rounds, Bulgarian split squats, goblet squats, and then pull-ups and push-ups for max reps and that circuit is repeated three times with minimal to no rest. At this point, your legs, arms, back, forearms, and whole body will be feeling it. Then you'll go directly into a performance-based circuit. The goal is to maintain a high level of performance throughout the circuit, despite the fatigue from the previous set of exercise. This could look like three rounds of 800 meters running at a goal pace, dumbbell farmer carries, air squats, and 60 seconds of walking rest. And with the 800 meters of running, the goal here is to get the job done. You must not allow yourself to slow down. If you allow yourself to fail to perform in training, you will train yourself that it is okay to fail and you will fail to perform at selection. The dumbbell farmer carry is still about performance, but now you need to focus on your grip, moving your feet fast, but also allowing yourself to recover your heart rate. And with the air squats, your legs will be burning, but you need to breathe and recover your heart rate. You'll get a breather with active walking rest, but by design, this rest period is too short, but you'll need to push through it. After this circuit, you will immediately jump into another pre-fatigue session, this time specifically targeting one of your weak points. In this case, it's going to be the shoulders and traps. You'll move into two rounds of dumbbell shrugs for max reps, with 60 seconds of rest between sets. The purpose here is to light up the shoulders and traps, before you move into the final event which is a longer zone 2 duration workout, either running or rucking. The goal here is to settle into your zone 2 pace. When fresh, you may be able to run a 9 minute mile, but now I want to see how do you perform under fatigue and acclimate your body to putting in the miles in this fatigue state. This work capacity session achieves three goals. One is to improve your ability to perform selection specific work while fatigued. Two, to acclimate your body to the shock and duress that you will experience at selection. And three, to test your will. Note that the goal of these workouts are not to improve your individual run, rock, max strength, or calisthenic scores. Although that's possible, there are much better ways to do that outlined in the previous videos. When you first do one of these workouts, your times are going to be poor. It is going to take a few weeks to acclimate to this kind of training, but you will get better, so long as you have that base of strength and endurance, meaning that you already have great run and strength numbers in isolation. Many of the people 
people that I coach for selection come to me having done workouts just like this, and they spent months spinning their wheels and making zero progress. If you're doing workouts like this and not making progress, here's why. You're just not as fit as you expected. If your fresh zone 2 pace is an 11 minute mile, and at the end of the work capacity session, you're running a 13 minute mile, you're not fit enough to even think about this kind of training. It doesn't make sense to peak your performance to run at best 11 minute miles. On the other hand, if the fastest you can run for an hour at a zone 2 pace is an 8.45 minute mile, and at the end of one of these selection workouts, you are running a 10.30 minute mile, that tells me that by doing this workout more frequently, we can close the gap between your fresh and fatigued pace and bring you down closer to a 9.50 or 9.30 minute mile pace with some more practice. This selection specific training is about peaking your performance and revealing the fitness that you've already developed. It's not about building it. But how do we actually measure how much of our fitness is being revealed and how do you progress on these workouts over time? There's several variables that we can manipulate. One is to increase the weight. Two is adding more sets, reps, or running intervals. Three is running faster or adding more duration. And four is cutting the rest period. I prefer to make as few changes to these workouts as possible and allow my athletes to naturally improve over time. What will happen is that week one, you're exhausted and by the time you reach the zone 2 run, you can only hit a 10.30 pace. By week 2, that circuit is still exhausting, but not as difficult, and you can now hit a 10.20 pace. That pattern will continue until you start to plateau or hit a peak. At this point, selection will be nearby, so you want to continue to challenge yourself and increase the difficulty of the workout. As a coach, I will be looking at the athlete as a whole now and see where they're weakest. I'll then adjust the workout to make that aspect of training harder. If you're concerned about your 5 mile time, you may add more rounds to the running, extend the distance, distance, cut the rest time, or make the legs even more fatigued prior to the run circuit. Whatever you do though, do not bias the workout more to your strengths. I see this all too often where the bodybuilder just wants to lift more weights, and the calisthenics guy avoids the weight room. That mindset of avoiding aspects of fitness will come back to haunt you. There are some other applications of selection specific training you will hear others advocate. These include doing actual timed 12 mile rocks, hundreds of push ups and pull ups, and timed 5 mile runs all in the same day. Is it possible to do this? Yes. Does it make sense to do this in training? No, absolutely not. As a coach, my goal is to maximize my athlete's physical performance and minimize their risk of injury. That should be your goal as well if you're self-coaching. By doing all of that work in one day, you run into two issues. Number one is risk for injury. Such high impact, max effort, rucking and running all in the same day puts you at a high risk for injury. Number two is fatigue. You are going to be out of commission for a couple of days and it will impair your future workouts. By doing a selection specific workout like the one that I've designed instead, you can achieve a similar stimulus that feels nearly as hard with less total time and wear and tear on the body. How is that possible? For someone who's fit and preparing for selection, it might not be until mile 6 or 7 of that 12 mile ruck where it starts actually getting difficult. So miles 1 through 6 were essentially throwaway rucking, but by pre-fatiguing certain muscle groups, the short rest and the sequencing of the workout, even though it's 2 hours versus 4 hours, the stimulus is actually similar. How and when do you actually begin incorporating selection specific work into your training? You should consider doing this type of workout 8 to 10 weeks out from your selection date. Before then, you should be focused on improving your strength and endurance in isolation. In terms of frequency, start on the low end and build up from once per week to as high as 2 to 3 times per week. But remember to monitor your fatigue and intelligently design these sessions. Remember, the goal is to acclimate your body to the demands of selection, not to destroy it. Here's an example training week. On Monday, you do your strength and running work. Tuesday would be another strength day. Wednesday, a running workout. Thursday, a strength workout. And Friday, you do your selection specific specific work capacity session. Saturday, you would move into a zone 2 event, a long, easy zone 2 workout to shake out the soreness of that selection specific workout. That covers how I implement selection specific training for my athletes. Ask your questions in the comments and thanks for watching.